Welcome to this program with the title The Seventh-day Adventist Church and the Adventist Layman Services and Industries ASI That is the topic we shall deal with in this program But first we will have a prayer together Dear Heavenly Father, we are thankful that you have called us to freedom and we pray that you must help us to understand how we shall be free and not slave through this program. We pray for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, this uh, topic uh, perhaps it will be um, seems to be a little harmful for some people because um, we shall go through uh, <coughs> some points here in uh, uh, guidelines for uh, uh, supporting ministries um, that has been uh, that some people they, they, they some ministries they shall sign a paper here with some it is six points and we shall go through these six points and see if these points is a good and uh, it is actually the Adventist layman services and industries it is a um, ministry that is standing behind the lay people in a way and the church and this uh, through this uh, these six points here they try to uh, bind the, the small ministries uh, back to, to be loyal to the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Uh, and we shall now go through uh, these six points. And uh, 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 on the, the first text we have in this uh, paper, <coughs> we read... <coughs> Adventist Layman's Services and Industries Guidelines for Supporting Ministries These guidelines are criteria for defining supporting ministries as outlined in the General Conference Working Policy K0505 So this is actually it's a general conference um, of the Seventh-day Adventist Church that is the policy they have that uh, we have in this paper and then the um, Adventist layman services and industries they use these gui guidelines uh, in this paper here so the layman shall underline and accept these six points <clears throat> and then we go to point one the leaders and the representatives of supporting ministries shall be loyal members of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in good standing. So then we at once we have a question. Shall we be always, shall they be loyal to the Seventh-day Adventist Church? Well, if the Seventh-day Adventist Church is in harmony with the Bible, they can be loyal to the Seventh-day Adventist Church. But if the Seventh-day Adventist Church is not in harmony with the Bible, then they will be loyal to the Bible. And then we come to point two in this paper. <clears throat> the theological positions of the supporting ministries and the emphasizes placed upon them shall be in harmony with the fundamental beliefs of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. In supporting these beliefs, the context of both the biblical text and writings of Ellen G. White will be faithfully used. The theological positions not addressed in the fundamental beliefs shall not be promoted. promoted. And in this um, connection we will see if the Seventh-day Adventist Church themselves are in harmony with the Bible and Ellen White's writings. 
we will see if um, um, the Seventh-day Adventist leaders promote the teaching of the Bible and the writings of Ellen White. Uh, and do they practice what they are teaching? That is the question. And then we wonder why the Seventh-day Adventist Church is not uh, preaching the, about the Laodicea message. A clear message about this message. Uh, and we read here from Ellen White that, uh, well, before I comment Ellen White, I will say that I think that we can hear some sermons about the Laodicea conditions. But as I have heard, it is very superficial. Uh, perhaps they try to cover the situation and make a nice cover over the situation and not admit the great apostasy that is coming creeping into the Seventh-day Adventist Church. We read from Ellen White, The Laodicea message must be proclaimed with power, for now it is especially applicable. No more than ever before are seen pride, worldly ambition, self-exaltation, double-dealing, hypocrisy and deception. So this text from Ellen White, tells us very clear that this message must be proclaimed with power. Because just now we have to give this message. Because this message will help us to prepare our lives so we can be ready for Christ's second coming. And this message to the Laodicea Church we find in the last book in the Bible in Revelation chapter 3. Verses 14 to 22. And then we read in verse 16. Because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, warm, neither cold nor warm, I will vomit you out of my mouth. This text tells us very clear that the condition, the situation in the Seventh-day Adventist Church is not good. God will, because of the condition they are lukewarm they think that all is well but it is not well and then because of this christ will vomit this church out of his mouth that means he cannot accept the church just as it is and then we have also this statement from ellen white the state of the church represented by the foolish virgins is also spoken of as the Laodicea state. And we know from the Bible, from Matthew chapter 25, there we read about the wise virgin and the foolish virgin, and the foolish virgins will not be saved. So the Seventh-day Adventist Church, as represented in this Laodicea message, they will not be saved in this condition. All that will be saved must come out of the Laodicea condition and thus accept Christ's counsel to the Laodicea church. The members of the church militant who proved faithful will become the church triumphant. So here we read about the remnant because some preachers within the Seventh-day Adventist church think that uh, the church will be clean, at last it will be clean. And all the people that not are in harmony with the church, they will be taken out of the church and then it will be some faithful people back. But this text here tells us that the members of the church militant, that means the church today, who proved faithful, will become the church triumphant. So it is it is the individual person. It is the person that who proved faithful that will be the church among the church triumphant. That is the remnant. Now just as sure as the Philippian Philadelphia church is the true church of the last days, just so sure the hundred and forty four thousand are sealed just before the coming of the Lord. So here in this statement we 
see very clear that it is not the Laodicea church in that condition that will be saved. But then we must come into the Philadelphian state. The Philadelphia church is the true church of the last day, days. And then we read from Ellen White, there is hope neither in Sardis nor Laodicea. Out of this experience must the victors come into that of Philadelphia, brotherly love. He has no promise for the Laodicea as a whole. But the individual who opens the hard door and lets Christ in, who comes into that wonderful communion with the Divine Lord, will by that very process come into the condition of the brotherly love. They will constitute the remnant. So, when we hear the proclamation and the teaching that the church will be clean and you have to come to the church and be there, then we understand that this can be a snare. This can, this can be a trap. But because the, the Bible and the Spirit and Prophecy, Ellen White's writings, tells us that is, it is the uh, individual that accepts Christ as a Savior and decide to follow Him all the way. They will constitute the remnant. The seal of God will be placed upon the foreheads of those only who sigh and cry for the abominations done in the church. And if some people think that the church will be clean in the last part of world history, just before Christ will come back again, why should the people of God that will receive his seal in their foreheads, why should they sigh and cry because of the abominations done in the church? That's a question. Because if the church was clean, then they did not need to sigh and cry for the abominations done in the church. So this text tells us very clear, it is great abominations within the church. And the church leaders should admit this and just warn the people that we have to come. They, ha they should specify what is wrong within the church, not only cover this situation with a nice cover, as we can see many times in the church magazines. If the church of God becomes lukewarm, it does not stand in favor with God anymore than do the churches that are represented as having fallen and become the inhabitants of devils and the whole of every fall spirit and the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Those who have had opportunities to hear and receive the truth and who have united with the Seventh-day Adventist Church, calling themselves the commandment-keeping people of God, and yet processes no more vitality and consecration to God than do the nominal churches, will receive the plagues of God just as verily as the churches who oppose the law of God. Only those that are sanctified through the tr truth will compose the royal family in the heavenly mansions Christ has gone to prepare for those that love him and keep his commandments. And then we have this powerful statement by Ilm Jibai. The seal of the living God will be placed upon those only who be a likeness of Christ in character. If the Seventh-day Adventist Church, as in this paper, should refer to the writings of Ellen White and the Bible. Why do they not teach this clear teaching as I have read now from you? Among these quotes, as we read here, the seal of the living God will be placed upon those only who bear a likeness of Christ in character. And that means that these people, they will follow the standard of God. 
But then we will end this little topic here uh, with this quote from Ellen White. There is hope for our churches if they will heed the message given to the Laodiceans. So it is up to you and it is up to me if we will listen to this message and understand that something is wrong with me, it starts with me and then you. And if we are in harmony with God, then God will, we will be a part of God's church. And then we also wonder why the Seventh-day Adventist church not preach all the three angels' messages very clear. You can hear some few sermons perhaps about this topic, but this topic is the three angels' message as we have it from Revelation chapter 14 verses 6 to 12. This we should concentrate to give this message to the world. And we can read this message. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God, and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgments is come, and worship Him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of water. So, very clear, this is the everlasting gospel that shall be given, and we also shall preach among others in this message that we shall fear God and give glory to Him in our life and lives and in our preaching. And we shall also preach to the world that the judgment has started in, he in heaven. We read here, the judgment is come. So before Christ is coming back again, it has been a judgment in heaven. And Christ has decided who will be saved and who will be lost. And we shall also worship him that created all things. And then the second message. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she has made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. So Babylon the great that points to all these signs of this power points to the papacy and they're working together with full Protestant churches today, today. But this Babylon the Great has fallen. It is not following the word of God. And they, they give the nations a drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. So that is false doctrines and biblical doctrines and traditions that this church give to the people. And we are warning, this is a warning to us to not to accept this teaching. And the third angels follow them saying with a loud voice, if any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, then he will be punished by the breath of God. So here is a warning also to accept, to worship the beast, the papacy, and take his image. The, the image of the papacy is the church and state is working together. And they will introduce this system all over the world, also in the United States of America. And we shall not, we shall not um, um, worship, uh, we shall not receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand. So we have seen in many other topics that the mark of the beast, the beast is the papacy and the papacy has a mark. And they say by their own sources that our mark is that we have introduced Sunday as a day of rest, Sunday the first day of the week instead of of the Sabbath, the seventh day of the week. And this, this uh, decision they have made there is a mark of their authority in religious matters. And then come an uh, addition to the second message 
from Revelation. We have this from Revelation chapter 18, 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. So, <clears throat> that is a message to all the people that take part in this ecumenical uh, connections. Uh, that uh, because we know that uh, the Catholic Church they want, want to unite all churches um, uh, together with Rome under the umbrella of Rome and unfortunately the Seventh-day Adventist Church the leaders of the Seventh-day Adventist Church have decided that we take part in this ecumenical movement and therefore the call is to all of us to all churches that they that 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 is uh, taking part of this linking together with the papacy to come out of her my people um, lest you um, um, that you be not partakers of her sins and that ye receive not of her plagues we are also amazed that uh, or the, the, that um, one of the leaders uh, of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in the 1980s Neil Wilson, he said this. Although it is true that there was a period in the life of the Seventh-day Adventist Church when the denomination took a distinctly anti-Roman Catholic viewpoint and which has now been consigned to the historic trash heap so far as the Seventh-day Adventist Church is concerned. So what the Seventh-day Adventist Church has said about the Catholic Church in former times they now cast it on the trash heap, historic trash heap. That is, that is a very special statement from this world leader. And the son of this Neil Wilson, that is a leader today, Ted Wilson, he has said that they should print more than 100 million copies of the book The Great Controversy. And this book, The Great Controversy, contains 42 chapters. And it's a historic uh, uh, book about what happened in the days of the Middle Ages when the Catholic Church persecuted God's people in a terrible way. It's about the reformers, Luther, Swingley, Calvin, and all these people, how they were persecuted by the Catholic Church. And it's a church. It's also a book about the how the papacy and the United States, in the last part of this world history, will unite and introduce the image of the beast and the mark of the beast. And all this, also about who is the Antichrist. All this has been taken away in a new little book that is called the Great Hope. So they have printed this Great Hope in many many copies instead of the book The Great Controversy. And this The Great Hope contains only 11 chapters. So they have removed much of the essential message which I gave today. And here you see a picture of this Ted Wilson giving this book uh, uh, to uh, home and in that way he showed that he accepts this book and will use it. And then we are also amazed what happened in these uh, panel discussions arranged by ASI in August 2014 where they should uh, deal with the topic about the three angels message. And then when they come to this point that they should, uh, they should uh, um, tell the people there uh, what is the meaning of the mark of the beast, then Ted Wilson he took the microphone and he said, among others, that the mark of the beast is to worship on any other day than the Sabbath. But if we worship on Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday, it is not to receive the mark of the beast. Because we have already seen that the mark of the beast is to worship on the day that the beast has introduced. And that is Sunday, because the Catholic Church has then introduced 
the Sunday as a day of rest instead of the Sabbath, the seventh day, the biblical Sabbath. So we are amazed that uh, 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 today the, the message is watered down. It is not so clear as we should tell it. But if we should use the text as it's standing here in this point from the Bible and the Spirit and prophecy, then the message should still be clear. But it is watered out as we have seen it. And we are also amazed that many institutions owned by the Seventh-day Adventists and also by the Seventh-day Adventist Church, they have linked these institutions to the trade unions. And even on this place here in Skogli Health Center in Lillehammer, Norway, owned by the Seventh-day Adventist Church, they both non-Seventh-day Adventists and Adventists, they are working for money on the Sabbath. And we should be a Sabbath-keeping people. We, it is a special sign for us that we shall keep the Ten Commandments and have the faith of Jesus. But we do not do this in practice when we are working for money on the Sabbath. L. White is writing a little about the trade unions. Men will bind themselves together in unions that will wrap them in the folds of the enemy. A few men will combine to grasp all the means to be obtained in certain lines of business. Trade unions will be formed and those who join those, uh, these unions will be marked men. These unions are one of the signs of the last days. Men are binding up in bundles ready to be burned. They may be church members, but while they belong to the, these unions, they cannot possibly keep the commandments of God. For to belong to these unions means to disregard the entire Decalogue. So, in white here, very clear, for a long time ago, for hundred years ago, she saw this problem. And she saw that the institutions that will belong to these trade unions, they cannot possibly keep the commandments of God. And we have seen that the staff members that is working on these institutions, they are also part of the trade unions. And this institution is a part of the trade unions. And then the trade unions say that the workers, they have to be paid also for the work they're doing on the Sabbath. So that is a fulfillment of this prophecy of Ellen White. That the people and the institutions that belong to these unions, they cannot possibly keep the commandments of God. It's another quote. Those who claim to be the children of God are in no case to bind up with the labor unions that are, that are formed or that shall be formed. This the Lord forbids. Cannot those who study the prophecies see the end and understand what is before us. So here Ellen White, some people they say that, oh, this was something she wrote for hundred years ago. But here this Ellen G. White, she so forward. And she could see and understand what should happen in the future. And then she said that we shall not bind uh, uh, up with the labor unions, trade unions that are formed or that shall be formed. So that is a message to our institutions also today. We are also amazed. That the seventh day of the church that preached this message, come out of Babylon, my people. Come out of the daughters of Babylon, my people. Then we see that the seventh day Adventist church has taken part in this ecumenical movement. And the new secretary general of the Christian World Communist, Dr. Diop Ganon, is pastor of the seventh day Adventist church. 
And here you can see some of the churches and councils that are a part of the Christian world communions. The Anglican Church, Catholic Church, Baptist Church, Lutheran Church, uh, Salvation Army, General Conference of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, the Methodist Church, and then you have many of these big ecumenical alliances and cooperations in the world. And then we have this, uh, this information is from the Seventh-day Adventist Inter-European Division, December 2, 2014. So this is not just something we say, we just find it from the sources of the Seventh-day Adventist Church themselves. And then we read, the conferences of secretaries represent about 2 billion Christians and cover more churches than any other organizations. We are amazed that even in the church magazines of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, they mention all these different churches as Christians. The Anglican Church, the Catholic Church, the Baptist Church, the Lutheran Church, the Salvation Army, the Seventh-day Adventist Church, the Methodist Church, all this is Christians. It's mingled together. The reformers, they said that all the signs of this Antichrist power points to the papacy. The papacy is the big Antichrist power in the world that deceived the nations and the people and the different churches. But today, even in the church magazines of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, they mention the Catholic Church and all the fallen Protestant churches as Christians. Because they are here in this, in this um, Christian world communions together with the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And then we are also amazed that the standard and the preaching of the Seventh-day Adventist Church is lowered, lowered, lowering. The standard is lowering. And they are preaching a new theology. It seems that they are online with many other, other churches in this ecumenical connection. And then we read from a Norwegian church magazine, the Advent Nyt. January 2015, and this is the editor of this mag magazine, Tor Kjærhansen. He writes, we are brothers and sisters in the faith. It is these people that have these different churches that are together with him to make this new ecumenical Bible based on the Codex Vaticanus and Codex Sinaiticus. He says, we are brothers and sisters in the faith. Christians in all denominations need to experience that we share the central doctrines of faith. We are not as different as we know and then believe. So he thinks that we have the central doctrines of our faith together with the other denominations. That is so wrong. And he continued, on the contrary, we share a common faith, experiences and values because we are influenced by God's word. In this connection we have a question. Where is the voice of the Protestants that shall reveal Antichrist and her daughters? And why has the voice been silenced? What has happened? We also find that Ellen White she wrote, she wrote that books containing false theories have been permitted to come from an office controlled by Seventh-day Adventists, while the very books that the managers should have been active and sealed in circulating everywhere, have been left to lie unused on the shelves. When the pure truth is mingled with the slime of satanic deceptions, how can God work for the advancement of his cause? And today we see that Many books from other denominations, from other churches, they are coming into the library of the Seventh-day Adventist Church members. And Ellen White, she continued, the enemy of souls had sought to bring in the uh, supposition 
that the Great Reformation was to take place among Seventh-day Adventists and that this Reformation would consist in giving up the doctrines which stands as the pillars of our faith. The principles of truth that God in his wisdom has given to the remnant church would be disregarded. All religions would be changed. Books of a new order would be written. And we have seen this that new books of a new order has come into our ranks. They are not in harmony with the Bible and the Spirit and prophecy. And these self-supporting ministries, they should support the church. But the church is not in harmony with the word of God. That is not right. We shall always be in harmony with the Bible and take part with the people that are interested to follow the guidelines, the blueprint, as we find it in the Bible. We can also mention that the Seventh-day Adventist Church also have gone out with a book is called Question and Doctrines. That is not the clear and right message uh, that we should give today. Much is correct in this book, but not all. So, books of a new order would be written. And we are also amazed, because here we read that we shall support the guidelines of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. They, we shall, we sh we, we, they, they, they shall uh, uh, tell us <laughs> what we shall, which guidelines we shall follow. And we shall, uh, as they say it, very nice that we shall follow the guidelines from the Bible and the Spirit and prophecy. But in, in the practice, use, we, we see that the Seventh-day Adventist Church differ from the Bible and the Spirit and prophecy in many points today. It's an apostasy coming into the church. And this is also the situation uh, with drama and theater. Ellen White, she's writing. Ministers in the desk have no license to behave like theatrical performers, assuming attitudes and expressions calculated for effect. They do not occupy the sacred desk as actors but as teachers of solemn truth. And I can, myself, I had an experience in my church. They have a, a theater and some young people, they played God and Adam and Eve in the, in the, in the Garden of Eden. And I went out on the pulpit and said to them, them that, no, I have to stop you. Because I watched this for a long time, but it, it was just terrible to look at it. So I said to them, no, I have to stop you. And then I said here that this is something of the most terrible things I have seen. Because you are playing God. And God is holy. He is clean. And you cannot play God. That is not right at all. And I say that here, the teachers are sitting, the leaders in the church are sitting, church members are sitting, and you are doing nothing. Just let this go on. And uh, I must say that this is, this is terrible. This is going on in many churches. So we have to just to, to give a sign to these people that something is wrong. And L. White, these statements, as I have, as I have already read here about what L. White is saying about drama and theater, that the, that minister in the desk have no license to behave like theatrical performers. And like this, you, I have, I do not need to to read it again, but I shall read another quote. These various forms of amusement in the churches of our days have ruined thousands who, but for them, might have remained upright and become the followers of Christ. Wrecks of character have been made by these fashionable church festivals and theatrical performances, and thousands more will be destroyed. Yet people will not be aware of the danger. 
nor of the fearful influences exerted. Many young men and women have lost their souls through these corrupting influences. In my very first labor, the message was given that all theatrical performance in connection with the preaching of present truth were to be discouraged and forbidden. Men who thought they had a wonderful work to do sought to adopt a strange deportment and manifested uh, oddities, oddities in bodily exercise. The light given me was give this no sanction. These performances which uh, savored of the theatrical were to have no place in the proclamation of the solemn message entrusted to us. And here this message is very clear that we shall not use this theatrical uh, uh, ways of working at all. El White is saying that um, uh, it should be forbidden to use this theatrical performance. So, because these per performances which severed the theatrical were to have no place in the proclamation of the solemn message entrusted to us. But then we also have the music that have ruined so much within the Seventh-day Adventist Church. A new form of music. And God has, we have this quote from Ellen White, Music, rightly employed, is a precious gift from God, designed to uplift the thoughts to high and noble themes, to inspire and elevate the soul. So the music that God has created should be very good. It should be good for us. It's, it's a precious gift from God, designed to uplift the thoughts to high and noble themes, to inspire and elevate the soul. Uh, and then we have this quote from Ellen White, The things you have described as taking place in Indiana, the Lord has shown me would take place just before the close of probation. Every uncalled things will be demonstrated. There will be shouting with drums, music and dancing. The senses of rational beings will become, will become so confused that they cannot be trusted to make right decisions. And this is called the moving of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit never reveals itself in such a bedlam of noise. This is an invention of Satan to cover up his ingenuous methods for making of no effect a pure, sincere, elevating, ennobling, sanctifying truth for this time. So that kind of music will ruin, ruin the preaching of the three angels message. And we read that uh, this will happen what happened in Indiana will happen again just before Christ will come back again. Just before the close of probation. And we see today just this is happening in the church today. New theology, new theology preaching, drama and theater. This kind of music with shouting, with drums, with music and dancing. They are using dance rhythm. And this is not in harmony with the right beat of music. Our work should be the following. Christ is waiting with longing desire for the manifestation of himself in his church. When the character of Christ shall be perfectly reproduced in his people, then he will come to claim them as his and then we will go to point three in this paper here with six points. And now we have come to point three. The leaders of supporting ministries shall support and cooperate 
with the goals and purposes of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in their words, actions and publications. Their work shall be positively supplement um, that of the Church in carrying out the Gospel Commission. Well, I think that it is very sad to read this uh, point here. Because it is like this that we shall do, do just as they want, the leaders want us to do. The lay people shall and the ministry shall support and cooperate with the goals and purposes of the church leaders. In verbs, actions and publications. So we can do no other things that just do as pleased the leaders. We shall support them, their goals and purposes. And we have already seen that they are the condition today. The Laodicea state is not in harmony with the standard that Christ has set put forward for us. So I will not underline this paper and accept this point here. Ellen White is writing the different conferences have been led to look to the leading men at Battle Creek feeling that no important move can be made without their approval. This tendency has been growing stronger until it is a serious hindrance to the advancements of the work. This arrangement should never have been. So that the leaders shall control all things is a hindrance to the advancements of the work. If, we, if they shall accept and we, we shall have their approval for all we shall do, it is very difficult to work. The Lord wants us to be free in Him, to follow His call to service. And in this connection, I think we have this very encouraging word from N. White. If ministers and men in position of authority will get out of the way and let the Holy Spirit move upon the minds of the lay brethren. God will direct them what to do for the honor of his sake. Let men have freedom to carry out that which the Holy Spirit indicates. Do not put the shackles upon humble men whom God would use. So. God, the Holy Spirit, will direct what we shall do. We do not need to have approval from the leaders what we shall do. Under the leadership of the Holy Spirit, we can preach the message because Christ has called us to service. And then point four. Supporting ministry leaders and their personnel shall clearly and explicitly state in their legal documents and their dealings with uh, third parties that they support the spiritual mission of the church but are independent supporting ministry not controlled by of legally affiliated with the church. So here we have it again that uh, in uh, the documents and in the speech in a dealing with all the people they shall support the spiritual mission of the church. And we have seen that the situation in the church and how they conduct uh, uh, ceremonies, ceremonies uh, in the church is not in harmony with the standard we shall follow. So we cannot support the church to do something that not is in harmony with uh, the word of God. Much precious time has been lost because man-made rules and restrictions have been sometimes placed above the plans and purposes of God. In the name of the Lord, I appeal to our conferences, conference workers to strengthen and support and labor in harmony with our brethren at Madison who are carrying forward a work that God has appointed them. 
And this was some people that wanted to start a school, the medicine school. And they had much, much resistance from the church leaders in this. Because they did not ask for permission for the leaders and just to follow their guidelines. They just followed the guidelines from the word of God, how they shall do it. And then Ellen White is saying here that the church, they should support medicine and help them in their work because they were in harmony with their work, were in harmony with the blueprint as we find it in the Bible and the spirit of prophecy. And then we go to point five. Supporting ministries shall not solicit accept tithe from Seventh-day Adventist Church members, but shall encourage their supporters to be faithful in returning tithe and appropriate offerings through the authorized channels of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. So here is a very touching point about the tithe. But this is an appeal to the lay people that they shall not um, accept tithe and they shall uh, encourage their supporters uh, to give tithe that they shall give tithe and offerings to the church and then what shall the lay people then how shall they survive when they shall not accept tithe and they shall encourage people to give their tithe and offerings voluntary vo offerings to the church i think that this is terrible policy because the church should support the lay people instead they're asking them for all the means the leaders they will have all the means for themselves and use it in adventist review march 3 1988 we read the following there is only one place for the lord's tithes to be deposited the storehouse of the church for adventists no other use of the tithe is admissible so the ch all the tithe they saying here all the tithe it is only one place you can give the tithe and that is to the church bank account And you shall not use the tithe in other ways and not give it to other people or ministries. But then it is very interesting that the Seventh-day Adventist Church themselves use much of the tithe money to speculate on the stock market. And you can see, watch this video about this. The title is SDA and the stock market and if we shall also give tithe to the preachers that are, that are preaching a new theology preaching that is not right i have no conscience to do that and then also to give tithe to the to the seventy Adventist preachers that are taking part in the ecumenical movement even we have seen from the even from the high position within the Seventh-day Adventist Church, they are even leaders in one of these big ecumenical gatherings. L. White is saying, God grant that the voices which have been so quickly raised to say that all the money invested in the work must go through the appointed channels of Battle Creek. Battle Creek was the headquarters of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in that time shall this voice shall not be heard the people to whom God has given his means are amenable to him alone it is a privilege to give directly aid and assistance to mission so this statement says very clear that we shall not give all the means all the tight money to the church but we can give it directly there where they need the money 
Because if the church leaders gave the tithe to all that gave the preaching, the right message to the world today, then the problem was solved. But they just give to some special people that are accepted by the church. And the lay people that not have underlined this paper, they shall not have tithe or money. Just as, and this is from the, from the view of the leaders of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. But the Bible is saying that all in 1 Corinthians 9.14 Even so the Lord has commanded that those who preach the gospel should live from the gospel. So this is what the Lord has directed us to do. It is not the same as the leaders of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. If we just follow the leaders in all things, that the tithe should go only to the Seventh-day Adventist headquarters, to the Seventh-day Adventist bank account, then this is not in harmony with this text either. Because this text says that those who preach the gospel should live from the gospel. It is not only the men that have been at New Ball or Loma Linda or Andrews or some of these colleges that have been priests, educated as priests, that shall have the tithe. The tithe is for everyone that is giving a clear message for this time and use all the time for this. And why she wrote something about the tithe. And here we have some quotes. I have myself ap appropriated my tithe to the most needy cases brought to my notice. I have been instructed to do this, and as the money is not withheld from the Lord's treasury, the storehouse, it is not a matter that should be commented upon. Some cases have been kept before me for years, and I have supplied their needs from the tithe, as God has instructed me to do. And if any person shall say to me, Sister White, will you appropriate my tithe where you know it is most needed? I shall say, yes, I will, and I have done it. I do not care to give publicity to this work which the Lord has appointed me to do and others to do. Conclusion When Ellen G. White gave tithe directly to those engaged in the gospel work, she said that this money had not been withheld from the Lord's treasury, from the storehouse. And then she said that the Lord had not only appointed her to do this, but also others. Obviously, then the storehouse must include more than one organization or group. In fact, the Lord has forbidden that all money, monies go through one organization. And then we have another example of this. El White is writing about this. There are ministers' wives. Sister Starr, Haskell, Wilson and Robinson, who have been devoted, earnest, whole-souled workers, giving Bible readings and praying with families, helping alone by personal efforts, just as successful as their husbands. These women give their whole time and are told that they receive nothing for their labors because their husbands receive their wages. I tell them to go forward, and on such decision and, and such decision shall be reversed. The word says the laborer is worthy of his hire. When any such decision as this is made, I will in the name of the Lord protest. I will feel it is my duty. I will feel it in my duty to create a phone from my tight money to pay these women whom, who are 
accomplishing, accompli accom accomplishing just as essential work as the ministers are doing. At this time, I will reserve for work in the same line as that of the ministers hunting for soul. So here, N. White is saying that I will protest of this. That the leaders, they deny these women to have the tight money. Because they are worthy to have the tight money. Because they use all the time for this work. And Ellen White decided that she would give from her own time to these people directly. Not through the leaders, as they are saying. But this is also something that God, if God working on your heart, that you see that some people are not are doing a, uh, that they are they are preaching the gospel for this time, and no one support them, and you see that they are lack of money. Then you also and I also can give over tight money to these people. And then N. White she continued, this will give you an idea of how matters are in this conference. There are seventy five souls organized into the at church, who are paying their tithe into the conference, and as a saving plan, it has been deemed essential to let this poor soul labor for nothing. But this does not trouble me, for I will not allow it to go thus. This is nearly the same situation as here on the paper, that the lay people they shall work, give full time in the work of God. But they, the leaders say, no, we will have the tithe. You shall appeal to the people to give us the tithe and the offerings. And then how shall these lay people survive when they not are being supported by tithe or offerings? But here Ellen White is saying that these ladies here, they are doing the work that we shall do, just as the preachers. And they shall have also tight money. Even though the leaders not accept them to have tight money. Ellen White is saying, it is right according to the Bible that these ladies also shall have tight money. Why should they do this work and not be, not and we not should give them the tight money. I think it is so wrong that in this paper that they say that all the tight money shall go to the leaders. And the lay people, they shall have nothing of the tight money. This is not correct. And then we come to point six. Supporting ministers providing services outside their own division territory shall consult with and secure approval via the union from the divisions, division administration concerned regarding the nature, extent and duration of services rendered within that division. So here we have it again that the lay people, they shall be loyal and do the work as the leader in the Seventh-day Adventist Church appoints them to do. They shall secure approval from the leaders when they shall do a work for the Lord. And White is writing, we feel as we must belong to some organization if we would accomplish good. But John the Baptist did not work on this plan. His mission was to prepare the way for the Messiah by his God-given message and under the guidance of the Holy Spirit he did the work appointed to him without calling to his aid either priest or rabbi. So we are living in the last part of world history. We shall be like John the Baptist. We shall when the God is calling us to service, we shall be loyal and do our duty. We do not need to go to the leaders and we do not need to sign here a paper that they shall control the work we shall do. God is calling us to service and He, when we have Him 
as our leaders, we know that we have the best leaders to guide us and protect us. Let me tell you that the Lord will work in this last work in a manner, manner very much out of the common order of things and in a way that will be contrary to any human planning. There will be those among us who will always want to control the work of God, to dictate even what movements shall be made when the work goes forward under the direction of the angel who joined the third angel in a message to be given to the world. This is a word to both the laymen and the leaders in the church. The leaders in the church, they shall not control the work. They shall not di dictate the work. But God will use people that are willing to go forward and they will work in much out of the common order of things um, in a way that will be contrary to any human planning. So God is taking the reins in his own hands and he will direct and support the workers. God will use ways and means by which it will be seen that he is taking the reins in his own hands. Here you have it. The workers will be surprised by the simple means that he will use to bring about the perfect and perfect his work of righteousness. So it's very encouraging to read this and see that God, he will take the reins in his own hands and we can be under his umbrella, in, under his hands. And that is the most important thing. And then we are coming to the last part of this, um, this paper here that the, the lay people shall underline and um, they um, shall then um, underline this paper that they have read what is standing here and that they accept of this uh, paper. It is interesting that uh, here you see four points and the uh, lay people, the lay ministry is in the bottom and then in the next step is the Adventist layman services and industries and then in the next step upwards is the Seventh-day Adventist church and then in the, on the top it's the United States trademark laws. It is interesting that the Adventist layman services and industries they try to bring the lay people under the, under the laws and rules of the Seventh-day Adventist church and then all of them are under the United States trademark laws and we have talked about this more in another program. But they, they are in that way, they are under the laws of the state, of the United States trademark laws. Because the Seventh-day Adventist Church has registered the name and many institutions inside the, uh, so part of the trademark laws. And the ASI is also trademark under, under this uh, trademark laws. So when they can bring the lay people under uh, and accept uh, this paper, then they are bound to the rules and the laws of the Seventh-day Adventist Church that we, we have seen they are not always in harmony with the Bible and the spirit of prophecy. We can say it in this way, that the ASI, is it bringing the different lay people and ministers under the guidelines and supervision of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. They shall be loyal members and follow the guidelines of the church leaders. What the Seventh-day Adventist Church and the ASI have done here is after a model of the Catholic Church. The church leaders have just done a terrible binding of the lay people and their ministers. And this paper, I will appeal to all the lay people that have underlined these papers to take it like this. 
you should not accept this. Because you, we shall be free in the Lord in this last day to give the message to the world. We have read it from the Bible and from the Spirit and prophecy. And let us now consider how the Catholic Church is binding their members. And here we have a quote from Catholic sources. The Catholic Church teaches that when the Pope as Bishop of Rome define a doctrine according to the faith, when he speaks ex cathedra from the seed, then he is the spokesman for the whole church. This loyal submission of the will and intellect must be given in a special way to the authentic teaching authority of the Roman Pontiff, even when he does not speak ex cathedra. And in this paper, as I broke, it is like this that we have to submit to the guidelines of the church, even if the practice is not in harmony. It's a, with the word of God and the spirit and prophecy, because it's a great apostasy, and we cannot take part in this apostasy. But they want us to submit the will and intellect nearly as this. To if we shall be a supporting ministers, we must accept their guidelines. It's nearly, it's very strong this, that this loyal submission of the will and intellect must be given. But God has created us like this, that we shall take our own conclusions in our lives. We shall not let other people rule over us and let us say let and say to us you have to do this and you have to go there and you have to be loyal to this and like this we have the bible as our standard we can pray to god for help and and uh, and we should be uh, under his hands because we read this statement from the catholic church but when you read this, that we, that that um, this loyal submission of the will and intellect must be given, then I was reminded of point six in this paper, as we have, we deal with in this program, because um, in this paper we read that supporting ministries providing services outside their own division territory shall consult with and secure approval from the church leaders. So I think that this is quite similar. It is not so strong as what we read from the Catholic Church, but even though we shall secure a parole, we shall secure, if the church is not in harmony with God, we shall have seek uh, secure a parole from the word of God. Question. Who shall be our Counselor, cons, counselor, who shall be our counselor? Who shall be our authority? By whom shall we secure a problem? And then we answer like this If the leaders, either the Pope or the Bishop of Rome or the Seventh day Adventist leaders or the Pentecostal leaders or the Baptist leaders, or the Lutheran leaders, or whatso, whosoever, are not following the Bible as their authority in all things. They have no authority, because the only authority is in the Bible, in God's word. And therefore we must seek approval from God. We must use His authority, the Bible. And the Holy Spirit will guide us to all the truth. The Holy Spirit will remind us of the truth. So we can follow the truth. In Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 5 and verse 8 we read. Thus says the Lord. Cursed is a man who trusts in man. And makes flesh his strength. 
whose heart departs from the Lord. But blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord. So we shall not trust in men. We shall not trust in the leaders. We shall not trust in institutions and organizations. We shall trust in the Lord. If not the leaders and the, and the organizations are in harmony with the word of God, we follow the authority as we find it in the Bible. In this connection, it is very interesting to read from the Second Vatican Council from 1962 to 1965. There, there you find this quote. For all of what has been said about the way of interpreting scripture is subject finally to the judgment of the church which carries out the divine commission and ministry of guarding and of guarding and interpreting the word of God. So here we have it again. It is the church that shall decide how you shall understand things, how you shall interpret scriptures. It's finally to the judgment of the church. We have seen this in this paper that the, we shall be loyal to the church and the plan they are doing. But we will always see if this is in harmony with the word of God. And if not, we follow the word of God. Thank you, God, for this. On this picture here, on the wall, it's a nice picture of a man, Norwegian preacher, lay preacher, it's called Hans Nielsen Hauge. And he has a house meeting, gathered people from the surroundings, he went from place to place and had such house meetings. And he was arrested because a law in Norway said that only the priest should preach. If not the lay people had permission from the priest they had no authority, no legal right to preach. But this Hans Nielsen Hauge, he had the Bible. He opened the Bible. He went from house to house and preached the word of God. The situation will come back again and is here today. That the lay people, they try, that the leaders in the church, they try to, uh, to, um, to stop this freedom. That they, they, they try to let the lay people be loyal to the leaders. But we shall do as uh, Hans Nielsen Hauge. We shall just preach the word of God. And God will open the ways for us and solve problems. The, the message will be given to the world. The three angels message will be, come out to all the world. And then the end will come. Luther and the reformers. They also were the leaders, they also tried to put them down, to stop them. Because they revealed that the church, the church were not in harmony with the word of God. So Luther, he was raised a Catholic and he saw that his church was not in harmony with the word of God. And therefore Luther had to appear before the Diet of Worms in 1521 and they wanted him to retract what he had written among others against the Catholic Church but Luther was firm and he pointed to the Bible and said that we have to to be loyal to the sola scriptura to the Bible and the Bible only and in the Bible here we have um, this uh, text from um, Oh, I have a Norwegian Bible. No, oh, here I have an English Bible. From Revelation, the last book in the Bible, from chapter 12 and verse 17. And the dragon was uh, enraged, wrought or enraged, enraged with the women. And he went to make war with the rest of her off offspring, who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. And the testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit and prophecy as we read it in Revelation 9, chapter 19 and verse 10. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. 
So it's therefore we refer to the Bible and to the spirit and prophecy and we believe that the writings of Ellen White was as from the spirit of God as the other authors in this book have the spirit of God. Well, Luther, he said to these leaders, I cannot submit my faith either to the Pope or to the councils. And we have to say, say, said, we have to say the same. We have to lift up the Bible as a standard we shall follow as Luther on this picture. Today, either we have to submit to the new world order, to the global system, to the international laws, or we have to submit to Christ. It is only that solutions. Because the Bible is saying in Revelation chapter 17, verses 12 to 14, that these world powers, they have war with against Christ and his followers and Christ's followers. So therefore it's only only two solutions. Either you will follow the worldly system and their leaders because they are not harmony with the word of God. The Bible reveals this. Or you will submit, submit your life to Christ and follow him fully. The Valdenses, they have to flee to the mountains to, to, um, to, sur uh, to survive. And even there, the Catholic the soldiers of the Catholic Church, they found them in caves and in the mountains. They took their Bibles, they burned them on open streets because these people, they had this, they had this um, uh, textus, receptus, and the Catholic Church was not in favor of that. So they burned their Bibles and they even the people themselves were burned at the stake. And we can also, we remember also the disciples of Christ as after he had res res ascended to heaven. Then the leaders of the church, they arrested them and put them in prison. They brought them before the council and the high priest asked them saying, did we not strictly command you not to teach in this name? But you see, you have this same here did we not strictly command you not to teach in this name? You have not followed our guidelines. You have to ask us first. And we, have, we, must, be, uh, we must decide a strategy so you can follow, so we can accept. But the disciples, they have learned to be free in Christ. And they went out to preach the message. The same with us. And then in Mark chapter 11 verse 27 and 28 we read that also Christ had problems with the church leaders then they Jesus and his disciples came again to Jerusalem and as he was walking in the temple the chief priests and scribes and the elders came to him and they said to him by what authority are you doing these things and who gave you this authority to do these things so Jesus had the same problem. The leaders, they wanted to control him. They, they wanted to be the authority. But God, but Jesus, he had authority from the Bible. He had authority from God in heaven. So he did not need, needed to ask the church leaders at that time. And we do not need to ask the church leaders in this time to give the last message of grace and warning to the people. Christ has given us this clear message. This was his mission. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. It is so many oppressed today. It is so, so many that are captive. But God, 
He wants us to break all the ropes that are around us and break every shackle so we can be free in the Lord. Because in John 8, 36 we read, Therefore, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. Christ, when we are free in Christ, you can just go out and preach the message without asking the priest or the leaders. But if they will support us in this world, it is very good. If we can go together um, to preach the right gospel, the right message, as we find it in Revelation uh, 14, verses 6 to 12, and in Revelation 18, verse 4, then we will do this together. So what will you and me? Shall we wait? Until the pastor give us, or the leader in the church, give us permission to preach. I think we always have seen the result, the answer. But we shall also read the answer from Christ. From Matthew 28 verses 18 to 20. And Jesus came and spoke to his disciples saying, All power has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. This message from Christ is very encouraging because it tells us that He is the chief commander. He is the leader. He is giving us a command to go out and preach the message. And because he has all power in heaven and on earth, it's because of this we can trust in him. Therefore we go out in his power in us. And he will be with us always, even though the church leaders will not accept us. It is very interesting to see how, cho how God cho cho choose choose people uh, in ancient time. Noah, he was called to service by God. God called Elijah to service. And Jeremiah, God called him to service also. And John the Baptist, he was also called um, from God to service. And Paul, Christ called him to service. And also the disciples, they were called to service by Christ. And God is calling also you to service. God is, has called me to service. He has always, he has already called me to service. And I have answered yes. Now God is calling you to service. What will you answer? He has said he will be with you. He will guide you. He will give his, you his, the Holy Spirit. So, so we have the needed power in our life. He will guide us. He will protect us. He will be with us always. And then, if not, the leaders will ordain you to service. Christ can ordain you to service. Ellen White we read this encouraging the quote from her. I have been instructed that not a few but many souls will be saved through the labors of men who have looked to Jesus for their ordination and orders. So, Jesus can ordain us to service if we want to follow him all the way, if we lay our, hand, our lives in his hands, then he will give us his Holy Spirit. So he will ordain us to service. And he will give us the orders we need in this work. And I will, I will, I have only two quotes more. And I know I have read one of them already. But I think I will end with this. If ministers and men in position of authority 
will get out of the way and let the Holy Spirit move upon the minds of the lay brethren. God will direct them what to do for the honor of his name. Let men have freedom to carry out that which the Holy Spirit indicates. Do not put the shackles upon humble men whom God would use. And then the last one. Laws and rules are being made at the center of the work that will soon be broken into atoms. The Lord does not ask permission of those in responsible positions when he wishes to use certain ones as his agents for the promul promulgation of truth. Many will be styled by the Spirit of God to break every shackle and assert their liberty in Jesus Christ. Christ will soon come again. The work will be finished. And God will use the people that are willing to follow him all the way. And you and me, we have to break every shackle to be free in God and fulfill the work. Let us end with a prayer. <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for the, your word, the Bible, and we pray that you must help us to break every shackle, that we must be free in you to give the last message of grace and warning to the world. I pray that you must work upon every heart, men and women that are listening, watching this program, that they must decide to follow you 100%. We are encouraged to read how you will go with us and we trust in this. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.